Spurgeon. <sighs> yeah, they talk about living water. Sometimes just plain old normal water is good enough for me. <laughs> In Spurgeon. <clears throat> The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Keep the altar of private prayer burning. This is the very life of all piety. The sanctuary and family altars borrow their fires here, therefore let this burn well. Secret devotion is the very essence, evidence, and barometer of vital and exper experimental religion. Burn here the fat of your sacrifices. Let your closet seasons be, if possible, regular, frequent, and undisturbed. Effectual prayer availeth much. Have you nothing to pray for? Let us suggest the church, the ministry, your own soul, your children, your relations, your neighbors, your country, and the cause of God and the truth throughout the world. Let us examine ourselves on this important matter. Do we engage with lukewarmness in our private devotion? Is the fire of devotion burning dimly in our hearts? Do the chariot wheels drag heavily? If so, let us be alarmed at this sign of decay. Let us go with weeping and ask for the spirit of grace and supplications. Let us set apart special seasons for extraordinary prayer. For if this fire should be smothered beneath the ashes of a worldly conformity, it will dim the fire on the family altar and lessen our influence both in the church and in the world. The text will also apply to the altar of the heart. This is a golden altar indeed. God loves to see the heart of his people glowing towards him. Let us give to God our hearts all ablazing with love, and seek his grace, and the fire may never be quenched. For it will burn in the Lord if the Lord does not keep it for it will not burn if the Lord does not keep it burning. Many foes will attempt to extinguish it, but if the unseen hand behind the wall pour thereon the sacred oil, it will blaze higher and higher. Let us use text of scripture as fuel for our heart's fire. They are living coals. Let us attend sermons, but above all, let us be much alone with Jesus. You know, it's a poetic way of putting it, but reality is, is that what he's saying is simply pray that there ought to be a time not prayer chains not prayer watches not prayer vigils not times where you tell everyone what you're praying when you're praying why you're praying and who you're praying for but rather you just be alone with God praying that no one can see no one can hear and no one knows you're praying except God alone because all your other prayers, when you do those in front of men to be seen of men, or even if you don't do them in front of men, if you just do them, period, and men see them, they are less effective. Because the reality is, is that you're influencing people with what you should be doing with God alone. Jesus himself said that the man whose prayer was just simply, you know, have mercy on me, was greater than all these wonderful ideas that people have of, forceful prayer, claiming it prayer, naming it prayer, you name it, and everybody's thought up some gimmick or some fanciful idea of simply trying to define what God calls conversation. No offense, but if you could see what God looks like sitting there listening to you sometimes with some of the fanciful ideas that people have of what prayer is, then I think it would be less made up and more heartfelt because the heartfelt prayer is one that God hears more often than not than the one that's demonstrative in gifts of the spirit or praying in tongues or praying in the spirit and those times are very selfish times when they're done in front of people to be seen of them because the reality is, is that all they do is bring to yourself people's attention and they focus your attention back on yourself the next time you're in prayer when you talk to God 
Try shutting up. Seriously. Try listening for a while and see if God might have something to say back to what he would have you to say to him. Because I think more often than not, people want to talk at God, pray at God, do at God, more than they want God himself. Communication with the Supreme Being is one of being in his presence and allowing him to speak and us to listen. And it should be that prayer is a attitude adjustment of correcting ourselves and putting us in the place of being in heaven at his footstool seeing what he can do for us as we understand that he is God and that we are simply created beings and we put ourselves back into proper standing with him and when you do that when you actually come into that place of seeing yourself when you pray in heaven, it will change your prayers because you'll realize there are other beings that are constantly praising the Lord, thanking God, giving glory to Him, and that your petitions are presented not by you, but by God Himself and the Holy Spirit. And the words that you think you are so superfluous and so wonderfully saying are simply reinvented into groanings because nine times out of ten most of what we pray is just the moanings and groanings of the people who are needing God more than they're willing to admit. So the Holy Spirit interprets it for us. And if you thought of your prayers as moanings, you're probably more accurate than you know.